Good evening for anyone who may be joining us a few minutes early. We'll be getting started promptly at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. And again, just for anybody joining us a couple minutes early, we'll get started in about one minute, right at 630. All right, and with that, it's 6.30 p.m., so let's begin tonight's session. Good evening, everyone. I'm Emily Waddell with the Harris County Flood Control District's communications team. Welcome to tonight's conversation. The purpose of this meeting is to inform you about a series of proposed flood mitigation projects within Halls Bayou and a federal grant administered through the Texas General Land Office that could help us fund them. I'm joined tonight by a team of flood control district leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. There are two ways to take part in tonight's meeting. The first is via phone by calling 855-925-2801 with meeting code 9181, or you can join us online at publicinput.com forward slash halls by you. Please note, if you're joining tonight's session via phone, you will not be able to see the presentation, maps, or exhibits. Those items are available on the meeting website in English and in Spanish. Please visit publicinput.com forward slash halls by you to access those materials. Additionally, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment or a question on this site in the box next to the presentation live stream. You can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash halls. And finally, if you're joining us via phone this evening, please press star three to leave a voicemail message. Any questions that are not addressed during tonight's question and answer session will receive a response after the event. Additionally, after this meeting is concluded, a recording of tonight's program and presentation will be posted to the Flood Control District's website. And again, that URL is hcfcd.org forward slash halls. We'll now repeat these instructions in Spanish for those of you who are joining us. Hay dos formas de participar en la reunión de esta noche. Por teléfono, llamando al 855-925-2801, utilizando el código de la reunión 9181 o en línea en publicinput.com barrita a uh, Halls Bayou. Tengan en cuenta que si se unen a la sesión de hoy por teléfono, no podrán ver la presentación, los mapas, ni, los, ni la documentación. Estos elementos están disponibles en inglés y en español en el sitio web de la reunión. Ingresen a publicinput.com barrita halls bayou para acceder a ellos. Existen tres maneras de enviar un comentario sobre ese proyecto durante la sesión de la noche. Uno, pueden enviar un comentario en el sitio en el cuadro junto a la transmisión en vivo. Dos, pueden enviar un comentario en el sitio web de control de inundaciones en 
hcfcd.org. Tres, por último, si nos acompañan por teléfono, presionen estrella 3 para dejar un mensaje. Las preguntas que no se aborden durante la sesión de preguntas y respuestas de esta noche se responderán después del evento. Una vez que finalice esta reunión, se publicará la grabación del programa y de la presentación de esta noche en el sitio web de Halls Bayou en hcfcd.org. Barrita de enfrente, Halls. Gracias. Thanks so much. We'll begin tonight remarks from Harris County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rodney Ellis and Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Adrian Garcia. After those remarks, we will then give a brief presentation about the flood risk mitigation projects in Halls Bayou. This will be followed by a guided discussion with the project team and a moderated question and answer session while you will have a chance to participate. I'd like to first kick things off with remarks from Commissioner Ellis. Commissioner, over to you. Hello, this is Harris County Commissioner Rod Ellis. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to join us this evening. These meetings are important. Getting your feedback and opinions on flood control projects is how we can ensure that projects work for you and your neighbors. Flooding is an ever-present threat to our community. It remains one of Harris County's highest priorities. We witnessed that on yesterday. With the third anniversary of Hurricane Harvey just a few weeks behind us, we can't forget that many of our communities are still vulnerable to flooding. Flooding affects all of us. That's why it's important that every community has a seat at the table throughout the life of the project and that every community benefits from flood relief projects. Tonight's meeting concerns an opportunity that Harris County has to receive additional federal funding from the Community Development Block Grant Program for improvements to halls by you. During Hurricane Harvey, more than 11,100 homes along halls by you flooded. Improvements in this watershed are long overdue, and additional federal funding to improve drainage could help reduce the risk of flooding for more homes and businesses in the area. Funding from the 2018 flood bond is a good start, but it's not enough to meet the needs in the halls by your watershed. We can and should do more. This additional federal funding is another opportunity to equitably allocate resources to an area of the county that has long been neglected when it comes to flood reduction projects. Your feedback tonight will, make it a, will help make an enormous difference as we work together to make this application as strong as it can be. Thank you for being a part of tonight's call and thank you to Harris County Flood Control District for hosting this virtual meeting. We look forward to hearing your comments. It's particularly important because we all had a big scare uh, with this last rain event. Thank you. Thanks so much, Commissioner. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to Commissioner Garcia. Good evening, everyone. This is County Commissioner Adrian Garcia of Precinct 2. First, let me begin by saying that I hope you and your family have not been harmed by COVID-19. But if you are concerned about your health or that of your loved one, don't guess and take the test by going to readyharris.org to make an appointment for a free test. We care about you and want you to remain as healthy as possible. And please make plans to take your flu shot as soon as possible. Secondly, thank you all for taking the time to join this meeting to hear from the Harris County Flood Control District about their hard work to better serve you and address the many challenges that exist in Precinct 2 and Harris County in general. My staff and I have attended many of these community meetings with the Flood Control District because it is my commitment to ensure that you are getting the information you need. This particular meeting will cover the importance of securing CDBG MIT grants to help fund future improvements along Halls Bayou. I'll leave the details for the Flood Control District to explain but it is extremely important for us to secure these funds. We recently lucked out with Hurricane Marco and Laura, but we weren't so lucky with Thunderstorm Beta. Believe me when I say I feel just as anxious as you do when a storm comes our way. And that's why I continue to work hard to get you the flood reduction projects this area so badly needs. The Harris County Flood Control District and I understand the urgency of getting these projects done. Thank you all again for joining us as community engagement is an important piece of our work. Before I forget, it is important to remind you to fill out your census questionnaire if you have not already done so. Please 
please, please do so because it could mean more funding for projects just like these, as well as funding for healthcare and education and so much more. You can do it online by going to my2020census.gov. It's less than 10 minutes to do, and it will help us get valuable funding for our community and our county. Thank you and have a good evening. Thanks so much, Commissioner. We we appreciate both of you joining us to kick things off this evening. Now can, to continue our conversation, I'd like to introduce Alan Black, Director of Operations with the Flood Control District. Alan, over to you. Thanks very much, Emily, and thanks to all of you for joining us tonight uh, for this meeting. As, as Emily mentioned, we're here to talk about an exciting opportunity to apply for federal grants through the Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known as HUD, to construct flood damage reduction projects in your community. The grants are called Community Development Block Grants for Mitigation, or CDBG MIT for short. I'm going to pause for a minute for those of you following along with the PDF via the phone, because we're moving to slide six of tonight's presentation. Para quienes siguen el PDF por teléfono, vamos a pasar a la diapositiva 6 de la presentación de esta noche. Now, before we get into specifics, let's set the stage. You may remember the 2018 bond election when Harris County voters overwhelmingly approved dollars to fund flood risk mitigation projects across the county. Since the bonds passing, we've initiated 144 of the 181 projects across all watersheds with 38 of those projects added based directly on input from you, the community. While the bond was for $2.5 billion, the full cost of every project in the bond table is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the outset that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects on the list. Without partnership funding, every project would still be started, but we may have to phase some of that work until additional funds become available. So this is where tonight's conversation comes in. Partnership funding, as I mentioned, is a vital aspect of the 2018 bond program, and we are committed to exploring all opportunities for additional funding to further these projects across the region. The Flood Control District works continuously to identify potential funding programs, and many of those programs are shown here in what I like to call the spaghetti model of federal funding. The federal government doesn't just write us a big fat check and say, go do good work. Instead, they appropriate funding into these various programs. We then match our proposed projects to various program requirements. And I should say those requirements are very different from one program to another. So we apply for, advocate for, and often compete against other projects for available funds. The funding sources we'll discuss during tonight's session the CDBG MIT program is noted on the screen with a yellow arrow. So CDBG MIT funding is administered at the state level by the Texas General Land Office or GLO. And tonight we're reaching out for your feedback on applications we plan to submit to them. These funds are designated for mitigation activities, which are the types of projects we prioritize at the Flood Control District every day activities that increase resilience and help reduce long-term risks for the community. These applications are due at the end of October, and it's important to note that there are no guarantees that will be successful. But again, we are committed to bringing as much federal funding as possible to the county. I wanna emphasize that tonight's meeting is not the only time you're going to hear from Flood Control District on these projects. With or without CDBG MIT funds, we'll be coming back to the community to share updates as these projects move forward into preliminary engineering and design, including more information about specific plans, exhibits, and timelines, so you can think of tonight's discussion as a high-level preview of that effort. We've been tracking this funding uh, since it was approved by Congress more than two years ago as part of the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018. In total, more than $4 billion was allocated to the state of Texas. And after navigating the lengthy federal and state processes, those funds are finally now available for entities across the entire state to apply for, and that includes Harris County and the Flood Control District. As you can see on this slide, we're currently in the community outreach phase, seeking feedback on proposed projects, 
and early next month, the draft applications themselves. As I mentioned, applications are due on October 28th this year. Here, you'll see an overview of all the projects included in all of our CDBG MIT applications across the entire county, including the ones we're discussing tonight. We're hosting these meetings all across the county to discuss these projects, gather feedback from residents, and continue the conversation about funding flood risk mitigation efforts across our region. So now I'd like to introduce Lars Zetterstrom, who will be discussing the specific projects that we're focusing on this evening. Lars, over to you. Thanks, Alan. For those of you following along with the PDF via phone, we're moving to slide 12 of tonight's presentation. Para quienes siguen el PDF por teléfono, vamos a pasar a la diapositiva 12 de la presentación de esta noche. I'm going to talk a little bit about the projects that Alan referred to, the projects that we are planning to include in a request for federal funding. But before that, I'd like to provide some background on the Halls Bayou watershed and flood risk mitigation plans for the watershed. While it's also its own watershed, Halls Bayou, which spans 45 square miles, is a tributary of Greens Bayou. Halls Bayou begins near the intersection of Antoine Drive and Fallbrook Drive and flows down through the Halls Bayou Greenway and Brock Park, emptying back into Greens Bayou. Flooding is a persistent hazard throughout the watershed for residents, businesses, and property owners. Tropical Storm Allison in 2001 is the stormer record for the watershed, flooding more than 13,000 homes. Then in 2017, Hurricane Harvey flooded an estimated 11,830 homes. The Flood Control District is taking a watershed-wide approach to planning flood risk mitigation projects in Halls Bayou. The Halls Implementation Program is a current effort that builds upon an earlier Halls Bayou vision plan for reducing flooding risks in the Halls Bayou watershed. Previously known as Halls Ahead and created with extensive community input between 2012 and 2013, the Halls Bayou Vision Plan outlined an ambitious $1.7 billion in channel improvements across more than 20 miles of open channels, plus numerous stormwater detention basins. The 2018 bond program incorporated many of these recommendations from the community and the vision plan. The general location of each of the 12 bond projects are represented by a star. The red stars are representative of projects included within the CDBG mitigation grant applications. These projects are in various stages, ranging from recently initiated to construction. Tonight, we will review the nine Halls Bayou projects that will be included in two of the CDBG MIT grant applications. On this slide, the red stars represent the nine projects included within the CDBG MIT applications. Each of, these ap each of these projects will make improvements to channel conveyance or the amount of stormwater that is able to flow through a channel and or construct stormwater detention basins, areas of land near a channel that hold above normal stormwater volumes during a heavy rainfall event before slowly draining back into the channel as surface water elevations recede. In order to build all nine of these projects, we will need almost $218.5 million. However, since the 2018 bond program is funding projects across all 22 of Harris County's watersheds, dollars to fund all nine projects to completion are not available in the bond program. As with other areas of the county, we are aggressively pursuing additional funding options whenever to help fund these projects. Before we dive into specifics, I want to take a moment to explain the project life cycle. And this is probably the most frustrating and difficult part of our job because the average life cycle of a project is between three to five years. The life cycle starts with a feasibility study to determine if there's a good project to be built. That leads to a preliminary engineering report. And after that, we can begin right away acquisition, which can take between 12 and 18 months alone. We also have to secure environmental permits, which can take another 12 months. We also work through utility relocations if needed and then complete final design. Finally, moving into construction and ultimately maintaining the newly constructed infrastructure along with all the existing facilities that exist around the county. I wanna emphasize that tonight, we will not be the only time you hear from us on these projects. Throughout each stage of a project life cycle, we solicit community input and secure funding opportunities to make these projects a reality, including the opportunity we're discussing this evening. The projects included in the grant applications are in various stages, but most are in the project development stage. It is worth noting that even if we are successful in obtaining grant funding for each of these projects, 
there are still several more steps we need to complete. If we do not receive grant funding for these projects, then the timing of the projects is uncertain and the life cycle is extended. We will now review each of the projects included within the CDBG MIT applications for Halls by. For those of you following along with the PDF via phone, we're moving to slide 16 of tonight's presentation. Antes de hablar de cada proyecto, uh, para los que nos siguen por teléfono, ahora vamos a ir a la diapositiva 16. Bond Project C01, located north of Halls Bayou and east of Airline Drive near Holtman Street, will construct channel conveyance improvements and a pair of stormwater detention basin near Helms Road. A Bond Project community engagement meeting was held in July of 2019 to discuss plans for the project. At that meeting, residents alerted the Flood Control District to areas that continue to flood, and that input was reviewed by the project team and taken into consideration. Currently in final design, this project is further along in the project life cycle than other projects included within the CDBG MIT application. Grant application funds are needed to fund right away design and construction. Bond project C23 located south of Chiddell Road and west of Wayside Drive will construct channel conveyance improvements and or stormwater detention basins. With the project still in the alternatives analysis stage, the exact project area is still to be determined. CDBG MIT grant funding will help continue the preliminary engineering stage, right away design, and eventual construction of the project. Bond Project C24, located between Cheese Drive and Rebel Road in the Scenic Woods neighborhood, will construct channel conveyance improvements and or stormwater detention basins. With the project still in the alternative analysis stage, the exact project area is still to be determined. CDBG MIT grant funds will help continue the preliminary engineering stage, right away, design and eventual construction of the project. Bond Project C26 includes conveyance improvements on two channels. Channel P11823-00 is located west of the Hardy Toll Road and terminates at Canino Road. A subtributary P11823-02 intersects with the channel near Gulf Bank Road. We are currently finishing up the preliminary engineering stage of this project. Once we produce the preliminary engineering report, we shall make a recommendation to the Harris County Commissioner's Court and proceed with the project design. Grant application funds are needed for right of way design and construction. Earlier this week, we did receive some exciting news that the Flood Control District's application for funding through the Texas Water Development Board's Flood Infrastructure Fund was approved. This funding amounts to 30% grant funds and the other 70% is a 0% loan. If we are approved for the CDBG MIC grant funds we are discussing in this meeting, those funds will help pay for the loan amount. Finally, the Bond Project Community Engagement Meeting was held in November 2019, and it, it discussed plans for the project. At that meeting, residents alerted flood control to areas that continue to flood. They requested assistance with reducing and limiting the flooding, and also expressed concerns about the timeline for completion. Resident input was reviewed by the project team and taken into consideration. Bond Project C-28 will be located just upstream on the west side of the Hardy Toll Road near Aldean Mail Route Road. We are currently finishing up the preliminary engineering stage of this project. Once we produce the preliminary engineering report, we will take the recommended project to Harris County Commissioner's Court and then proceed with project design. Grant application funds are needed for right of way design and construction. While we do not get did not get full approval like we did for C-26, we also learned early this week that this project is on the waiting list for funding through the Texas Water Development Board's Flood Infrastructure Fund. Just like with C-26, if we are approved for the CDBG MIC grant funds, those funds will help pay for the loan amount. A bond project community engagement meeting was held in November of 2019 to discuss plans for this project. At that meeting, residents alerted the flood control district to areas that continue to flood, requested assistance with the reducing and eliminated flooding, and expressed concerns with the timeline to completion. The input was reviewed by the project team and was taken into consideration. Bond Project C30 will be located between Sweetwater Lane and Airline Drive. Since the project is currently in the alternative analysis stage, the exact location is yet to be determined. CDBG MIT grant funding will help continue with the preliminary engineering right away in design and with eventual construction. <clears throat> Bond Project C41 has several projects included within it. 
All projects included within C41 make improvements to the main stem of Hall's Bayou. The first project we will review will make channel conveyance improvements and construct stormwater detention basins. The exact project location is still to be determined, but it will be along the main stem west of the Hardy Toll Road up to Woodmoss Drive. The alternatives analysis stage just started for this project. CDBG MIT grant funding will help continue the preliminary engineering stage, right away design and eventual construction. A second component of bond project C41 will make channel conveyance improvements in two separate locations. One south of Hopper Road demonstrated on the left and in the northern area of the Keith Weiss Park near Aldine Westfield Road demonstrated on the right. These alternatives analysis stage just started for this project. CDBG MIT grant funding will help continue with the preliminary engineering stage, right away design and eventual construction. A final component of bond project C41 will construct a stormwater detention basin along the main stem near Keith Weiss Park and west of Aldine Westfield Road. The exact project location is still being studied and is yet to be determined. Phase one of this project will make channel conveyance improvements and a stormwater detention basin is currently in the final design. Phase two of this project currently in the alternatives analysis is the phase included within the CDBG MIT grant applications we're discussing this evening and will construct additional stormwater detention capacity in this area. CDBG MIT grant funding will help continue with the preliminary engineering stage, right away design and eventual construction. Now let's talk money. In partnership with Harris County Engineering and the City of Houston, the Flood Control District is submitting six applications for CDBG MIT grant funds worth approximately $100 million each. Of those six applications, two of the applications are exclusively for projects within Halls Bayou totaling approximately $200 million. The nine projects included in these applications were chosen since together they represent the remaining unfunded bond projects in Halls Bayou, with the exception of CI-006 Brock Park project. That, pro that, excuse me, that project is not eligible for CDBG MIT grant funds since the cost of the project is over $100 million. We must, however, acknowledge that CDBG MIT grant funds are not guaranteed. We broke up the Halls Bayou projects within the two applications in a way that if only one application is awarded, projects will still make a difference in flood risk mitigation throughout the watershed. Before we dive into specifics, I do want to note that we are still finalizing our applications for these funds, and tonight's meeting is part of that effort. We know our overall goal is to maximize additional funding whenever we can, so our applications reflect that strategy. The first application includes five projects, including projects along the main stem and tributaries. This application will be valued at approximately $100 million with about $11 million in local funds. That will help us cover the estimated total project costs of just over $111 million. The second application has four projects included with an estimated value of $100 million. Again, we are going to maximize available uh, dollars in both of these instances. The local share for this project will be $7.5 million to cover the estimated total project cost of $107.5 million. As we discussed earlier, if awarded, the grant funds for both applications will go towards different parts of each project from preliminary engineering and design and finally to construction. And with that, I'll turn, back, I'll turn this back over to Emily to kick off the question and answer period. Thanks, Lars. We have covered a lot of ground tonight, as you can tell. There are um, a, a great slate of projects that we're including in the two applications we're discussing this evening. But before we dive into your questions, I want to take a moment to remind you that we want to hear from you on this effort and on other efforts that are rolling out across the county. You can visit hcfcd.org forward slash halls for more information about these projects and other efforts in the Halls Bayou watershed. Additionally, we'll be sharing additional information about the CDBG MIT grant applications on our website once the formal comment period opens. Alan and Lars are joining us again for a question and answer session along with Dina Green and Shin from the Flood Control District team. However, before we open it up to your questions, I wanna share a quick reminder of the three ways you're available, you're, you are able to submit comments and questions about this project during tonight's session. You're able to submit a comment on this website in the box next to the presentation live stream. 
on the flood control district's website at hcfcd.org forward slash health by you. Or if you're joining us via phone this evening, please press star three to leave a message. And I'm going to repeat these um, instructions in Spanish for folks who are joining us. Existen tres maneras de enviar un comentario sobre este proyecto durante la sesión de esta noche. Uno, pueden enviar un comentario en esta página en el cuadro que hay junto a la transmisión en vivo. Dos, también pueden enviar un comentario en el sitio web de Flood Control en hcfcd.org barra L Halls. Y tres, por último, si nos acompañan por teléfono, presionen estrella 3 para dejar un mensaje. Thanks so much. All right, and with that, let's dive into questions. Um, question number one is going to go to Lars. So Lars, Bryce, you know, Bryce C., I will say, asks, what, if any, effect has the pipeline construction had on these projects? You may have to do a little reading between the lines. Okay, well, good evening. Thank you for your question. Um, we conduct utility coordination for all utilities, including uh, various pipelines in our project areas. Um, so that's part of our, our normal process. With regard to this specific pipeline, we are working closely with the city of Houston, and we understand that the depth that they intend on constructing this pipeline will be at a level that will not impact our future planned conveyance or detention uh, projects in Halls Bayou. Great. Thanks so much, Lars. Question two is going to come um, to Alan, and this one's from um, Andrew Campbell. Um, and we've gotten a couple of questions to this effect this evening. Alan, can you just talk a little bit about um, maintenance in this area and um, responsibilities for um, keeping drainage ditches and other areas clear? Sure. So I'm going to start by saying that uh, any question specifically to an area that is submitted tonight, uh, we forward to uh, what we call our property managers, and they can take a look and make sure that your request gets to the right person, gets to the right agency. And the reason I say that is because the Harris County Flood Control District's jurisdiction has some limits. Uh, we mainly, in fact, primarily only overlook, oversee and own and maintain larger channels, larger bayous and creeks, uh, but the smaller roadside ditches and the storm sewers that are underneath the roads, uh, those are maintained by other agencies. And most cases in the, uh, the area of halls is going to be the city of Houston or in some cases a municipal utility district or, or Harris County. So we don't have the jurisdiction to be able to do that particular type of work. But I also don't want you to think that we're dodging and avoiding that kind of question. And so, again, our property managers uh, will take those questions. We'll look at where the area is and to find out who the person that is responsible for those. And we'll make sure and get your concerns conveyed over to them. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Alan. Um, Patty, I'm going to kick it over to you now for a question in Spanish from Mary Sol. Marisol is asking, what date did the project, did you all begin working on the bayou? And then Chris, Cristobal is asking, will the neighborhood be demolished? And how will you be better prepared to avoid these situations? So Lars, I'm gonna give both of those questions to you. Okay. Um, could you please repeat the questions? I'm sorry. Sure, they're, they're asking what what date did they begin working on the new projects? And the question, I guess it's a two part question. Cristobal is asking, uh, will the neighborhood be demolished? And could they have done something better to be prepared to avoid these situations? So I guess I'll go with the question about the neighborhood be demolished first. Unfortunately, without more specific information about which neighborhood he's referring to, it's kind of hard to give a specific answer. Uh, generally speaking, though, we are doing everything we can to avoid uh, having to acquire properties. Um, we will follow a lengthy process to obtain the properties that are determined to be absolutely essential to be able to produce the flood risk reduction that we intend on providing by these projects. Um, 
And then as in terms of when we started, at least for the bond implementation program and the 12 projects from that program, um, the first project in construction is depicted, uh, and it's not on this slide because these are the projects that are including for the MIT applications, a project that's already funded for construction is bond project C35, and it began construction last month uh, and is expected to take um, approximately a year to complete. Perfect, thanks, Lars. And Patty, back over to you for the translation. Thank you. Para empezar, el proyecto, obviamente no va a estar el proyecto anotado en estos porque esto es para los proyectos de, eh, de que estamos mitigando ahora, pero el proyecto C35 se empezó el mes pasado y duró un año. Y ahora hablando sobre la pregunta de la, si la colonia va a ser demolida, um, es difícil uh, de contestar esa pregunta si no tenemos lo específico, la colonia específica, ¿verdad? Pero vamos a hacer todo lo posible para evitar adquirir propiedades y de hecho es un proceso muy largo um, dentro de esos 12 proyectos. Um, es muy largo y vamos a hablar de, vamos a seguir tomando eso en cuenta. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question um, is going to come to Alan. It's a little bit of a bigger picture question about the application process. Alan, James W. is asking who the flood control district is competing against for this funding. So a good question, and it's important to understand that because it also emphasizes that there are no guarantees that will be successful in our grants. So the larger pot of funding that the Texas General Land Office has set aside, and this is called the Hurricane Harvey uh, uh, program, uh, has more than $2 billion available. And the entities that can apply, there's a pretty long list of the different types of agencies and municipalities and cities and counties that can apply. But it's almost 50 different counties in the state of Texas that are eligible. And so again, our, all of our projects will be submitted along with all these others. And I'll give one other good example is that uh, a recent program uh, that received applications uh, at the state level, this was through the Texas Water Development Board, uh, they had a little more than $700 million available, but they also received applications for more than $2 billion worth of projects. And so there's a little bit of an uphill battle. We're optimistic because we have good projects. But again, there are no guarantees and there will be a lot of people, a lot of different agencies and entities preparing and submitting these applications by the end of October. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. That's helpful. Lars, our next question is going to come to you and it's from Rosalva Hernandez. Um, she wants to know a little bit more about whether or not these funds will be used to add additional drainage systems along Paul's Bayou. Um, and I think she was asking about a specific church, but then got some clarification. So can you just speak to that um, element? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the these bond projects are part of initial phase of a long-term strategy or vision plan for Halls Bayou. Um, what's good about this source of grant funds is that it's prioritizing for areas that are low to moderate income or have a social vulnerability in, uh, index. And so compared to how projects are typically have to be justified with a benefit to cost analysis and a high benefit to cost ratio. We know we don't know how these uh, projects and applications will score once they're submitted to the GLO, but we do know enough about how they're going to uh, calculate the points that we feel that this particular watershed uh, has a, a high chance of being strongly considered uh, for funding. And so we have to wait and see how they'll be evaluated by the GLO. But this grant source, again, does prioritize for areas that are low to moderate income. Thanks, Lars. Um, I'm gonna stay with you for our next question from Shirley. Um, she's asking why homes are being brought out for um, Project C31 if the project's still being studied. And I think that gets back to the project lifecycle conversation you were having earlier, if you could speak to that. So my guess is that she's referring to the project that has two phases, um, which is uh, the project that has both conveyance improvement and attention. That project is currently funded by uh, community development block grant disaster recovery funds. We intend on trying to increase the amount of storage uh, detention in that area 
uh, leveraging these CDBG mitigation grant funds. All right, thanks, Lars. Um, and Lars, I'm gonna stay with you for this next question and then kick it over to Alan as a follow-up. Um, we have a question from Mr. Esparza asking if planning for any trails on these projects. And then Alan, I think it'd be great if you could just speak to that at kind of a high level for the organization. So um, the, the flood control district is to reduce the risk of flooding, but we do, while we're developing the preliminary concepts for these projects, uh, try to incorporate uh, recreation element options into them. And then we're able to work with our local partners uh, from the various precincts or the city of Houston or the Houston Parks Board that have the authority and the funding to provide recreation projects to the community and integrate and synchronize them. So as we implement these uh, various projects, they would have the opportunity to also overlay recreation projects uh, in conjunction with them. But at this point, it's really too early to tell what type of recreation improvements might be considered by our partners, uh, but we definitely will do our best to uh, work with them to ensure that they are taken in consideration. So uh, Lars did a pretty good job of answering that. I'll only add a few additional thoughts. Uh, first is that the potential planning for recreation uh, starts very early, and that's uh, and this community outreach is a big part of that. When we hear from the community that they want uh, there to be recreation, they want there to be trails along the uh, the, the bayous. Uh, that's when we start working with potential sponsors. As Lars mentioned, our mission and our enabling legislation doesn't allow the flood control district to fund projects that to fund trails. Uh, but we do work with those sponsors and in some cases even we've worked directly with uh, uh, our precincts and incorporated the uh, the trails into the construction project uh, but they provide the funding for it that way we're able to build all of the work at one time rather than come in there and do some of it and then somebody else comes in later and does a little bit more of it so there are ways that we can absolutely work with the sponsors whether that's uh, the city of Houston or the parks board or the parks department or the uh, our, our precincts. And so we're always looking for those sponsors and we're excited about it when uh, when somebody is able to step up so that way we can build a little bit more value for the community. Wonderful. Thank you both. That's really helpful clarification. Um, we are getting a couple of additional question, questions about things like ditch cleaning and maintenance. So like Alan mentioned earlier, we'll be sure to follow up with folks after this meeting and make sure that we're connecting you with the appropriate contacts. Um, Alan, I'm gonna stay with you for our next question, which comes from Michael Turner. He's asking about the timeline for the grant application process. When do you expect we'll know something about the results? Uh, that, that's a really good question. I don't know the specific answer to that uh, because once we submit those applications, it'll be up to the Texas General Land Office to uh, to review, evaluate, and score every one of the projects. And as I mentioned, in some of the previous programs, um, there have been far more applications than there has been funding. So the amount of time it takes for the review of those applications will somewhat be contingent upon how many applications they get. Now, my best, my best guess is that if we submit the number one best project that there is, uh, especially on this particular program and on this scale, we're probably talking about sometime next summer uh, by the time that we're able to actually start work expending those funds. Now, the good news is some of the design work and things like that and alternatives analysis, we've started looking at that already. So that way, hopefully, if we're successful, it will be a relatively seamless transition. Uh, in other words, we don't want to be sitting around twiddling our thumbs uh, and not doing anything. So we're going to continue to produce good work on these projects where we can while we anxiously await to find out if we're successful on any of these grant applications. Okay. Thanks so much, Alan. Okay, Dina, our next question is going to come to you, and it's from Chris Shepard. Um, he's asking if any money can be granted from the upcoming I-45 expansion project for these projects. Okay, great question. Yeah, TxDOT has started work on their segment one of I-45, which will cross Hall's Bayou. Um, in general, I-45 is a bit farther upstream from the projects that we're proposing for these CDBG mitigation grant applications. However, flood control has been coordinating with TxDOT on that I-45 project as it 
process halls by you so that we can start coordinating with each other and see if there's room for both agencies to work with each other on some um, mitigation projects near the I-45 crossing. So I would anticipate that project to be separate from what these CDBG MIT projects are, are that we're proposing tonight. However, in the future, when we come back and give more updates on the projects in the Halls Bayou watershed, we should be able to give an update on what our coordination with TxDOT will be like at that I-45 crossing. Thanks so much, Gina. That's really helpful. Okay, Shin, I'm going to come to you for our next question. Um, we have a question from Yannette Ruiz asking how effective these channel um, conveyance improvements will be. Um, and she also asked how the capacity of these channels um, might be able to be adjusted with climate variability. It's a big question, but um, I'm going to turn that one over to you. Okay, sure. Uh, so first question, how effective are these uh, channel improvements? Uh, usually we measure the, the channel improvement uh, projects like in terms of how many structures we can reduce from them from the footprints. And also uh, we're also looking like how many miles uh, we can reduce the, the flood areas and on the roads. So we do have a several criteria, what we call the, the performance uh, metrics. So that way we can know how much benefits we can uh, provide to the area. And the second question, uh, so as we have the, uh, right now we have the new Alex 14 data, the, the more info data, we are looking for a higher uh, level of service. What we use to look for uh, the 100 year level of the service, and now we're looking for 500 year of level of service to design the projects. Thank you so much. And Alan, I'm going to kick this over to you as a follow up to that. Can you talk about what that level of service means? Sure. So level of service relates to uh, how much water uh, a, a channel can convey. Um, when we use terms like a 100 year event, uh, that's based on a statistical rainfall. Um, so we figure if this much water rains from falls from the sky, will it stay within channels? Uh, and if it's if a 100 year rainfall in the models stays within a channel, then that is considered the level of service is that it will carry a 100 year event. Um, if it's something less than that, for example, if it's a much smaller channel and many of the, uh, the, the storm sewer systems in neighborhoods are really only designed to hold a two year storm. And so anything more intense than that, a heavier rainfall, more rain in a shorter period of time uh, would start to rise up. So that's really what we mean by a level of service for a channel. Thanks, Alan. I think that's helpful background for this conversation. Lars, I'm going to come to you for our next question. It's from Vicki Martin. Um, she wants to know a little bit more about the Halls Bayou project near Tidwell. What is the scope of that project, the cost, and the completion date? Great. Uh, great. Thank you for the question. Very specific. So that project is bond ID C23, which is in the P11808 tributary. Uh, the project is looking at improving conveyance along that L-shaped uh, tributary as it flows from the west to the east and then from the south to the north into Halls Bayou. It's right now approximately a $19 million project. Uh, and current, assuming that we receive the necessary grant funds, we are estimating to begin construction in 2024, and it would be about approximately a one-year construction period. Perfect. Thanks so much. Appreciate that, Lars. Um, Dina, I'm going to send our next question to you from Tim S. He's asking if there will be any additional community outreach for these projects in the future. Okay, yes, there will be additional community outreach. Um, really, there will be community outreach on, on a couple of different fronts. One, as we move forward with these CDBG MIT projects, if we're awarded that funding, we will certainly continue, continue uh, community outreach um, in accordance with what the grant requirements are. But in addition to that, flood control feels that it's very important to continue community outreach related to the bond projects that we uh, were included in the 2018 bond program. 
Um, so we'll be reaching out to the community to sharing updates on all of these projects as we move forward with them and to make sure that the community is informed and has a chance to give their input to us. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Dina. Um, and as Dina was talking about, um, it's a natural segue into tonight's conversation. I want to share a quick reminder just to how folks can submit comments. Um, so you're able to do it either in the box next to the live stream on the Flood Control District's website, or if you're on the phone with us this evening, please press star three to leave a voicemail comment. Um, Lars, we're going to come to you next with a little bit of a big picture question. Um, can you talk about how about some of the benefits of these projects and what we anticipate seeing? So the, the intent of these projects is to provide a uh, pre Atlas 14 500 year level of service, which is roughly equivalent to an Atlas 14 level of service. If people aren't familiar with Atlas 14, that is, those are the updates that were recently completed by FEMA that account for the increased rainfall historic data that we have available that allows us to determine how best to uh, analyze and design our projects to. So that's our overall intent for these projects is to eventually be able to provide a Atlas 14 100 year level of service uh, for these bond projects. And then as we tr implement the phases of the vision plan to ultimately achieve that for this watershed. Great, thanks so much. And Lars, I'm gonna stick with you for our next question. Um, Maria Zuniga asked if the flood control district is planning on doing anything with the sections of Paul's Bayou at I-45 in West Mount Houston. Yeah, um, good question. I think a, a variant of that was asked earlier and, and Dina gave a little bit of information. So right now in the bond program and these projects that we're trying to seek input from the public on for the two MIT applications, it is not. But we are working very closely with TxDOT uh, and looking at things that we can do in conjunction uh, as they look at uh, designing and constructing segment one of the I-45 improvements, which would be the bridge uh, over um, Halls Bayou and I-45 and just downstream of that of the um, that uh, the 249 bridge crossing there. So we are working with them and are going to look at that uh, in upcoming phases uh, after this uh, bond implementation program. Great, thanks so much, Lars. Dina, I'm gonna come to you for two questions in a row, actually. So the first one is from Ms. Sadler, who um, I think Lars mentioned during his presentation that um, Halls is actually a tributary of Greens Bayou. Can you talk about the boundaries for those two watersheds? Sure. Um, would you mind pulling up the last map we were looking at that showed the Halls Bayou watershed? Okay, so exactly right here highlighted in sort of that tannish gray color is the Halls Bayou watershed. And if you look towards the right of your screen, that uh, very downstream end of Halls Bayou is where it, it drains into Greens Bayou. So Halls is considered a tributary to Greens Bayou. And what that means is, is Halls Bayou actually is located within the Greens Bayou watershed, but it's a major channel that captures flow within the Halls Bayou watershed and delivers it to Greens Bayou. And when we're talking about a watershed, we're really talking about an area um, that's defined by topography. So everything within that watershed would actually drain to Halls Bayou. So if you, you see kind of north of the Halls Bayou watershed there where it's the lighter color, all of that area up there would drain directly into Greens Bayou. Everything in that tannish gray color drains directly into Halls Bayou where it transports it down to Greens Bayou. Great, thanks so much, Gina. And like I said, you get two in a row. Okay. Um, so my next question for you is um, why these locations were identified for projects over others? Okay, <laughs> excuse me. So there are a variety of reasons for that. Um, these projects were selected for the CDBG MIT grant application um, based on, on a lot of characteristics about them. Lars went into some of that earlier today. There's, um, there's criteria that we're trying to meet so that our applications will score and so that we'll have successful candidate projects um, we, when we submit those applications to the GLO for consideration. So when we went back through and looked at the bond projects that were included in the Halls Bayou watershed, we thought that these would be the strongest contenders. Um, they provide a lot of benefits, the characteristics of the area where they're located. We also think are a good match for that grant application program. And also 
we need to remain within a certain amount of budget that we can apply for as well. So we think that these are, are very strong candidates to submit in those grant applications and hopefully we'll be successful in, in receiving those funds. Great, thanks so much, Dina. Um, Alan, I'm gonna come to you for um, a little bit of a, a bigger picture question. Um, so we're getting some comments um, specifically from Ismael Benitez um, in support of the grant application, which is always great to see, but can you talk a little bit about how those types of comments fit into what we're submitting for this effort? That's, and I'm glad you brought that up because there is a specific reason why we are uh, asked by the GLO to seek this feedback. They want to hear whether or not the community supports these sorts of projects. Uh, not just the GLO, we would like to, the flood control district, your precinct commissioners, everyone would like to know, are we, are we hitting the mark? Are we getting the work done that you are expecting us to get done with the taxpayer dollars that uh, the all have provided to us. And so that kind of feedback is important. It's crucial. We're documenting all of that. That becomes part of our application. Uh, when we submit it to the general land office, we'll say we met with uh, folks on in the Halls Bayou watershed on September 22nd, and everybody asked these types of questions. We made sure to provide responses to everyone, and that we hope that that goes a long way to, to really building up that community support uh, and will uh, we'll, we'll score favorably um, when they start comparing our projects to other projects. Great. Thanks so much, Alan. An important reminder. Okay, I'm going to turn this back over to Patty for just a moment for a reminder um, for those of you who are tuning in in Spanish. Hay dos maneras de participar en esta reunión esta noche. Uh, perdón, pueden enviar un comentario en este sitio uh, en el cuadrado junto a la transmisión en vivo. Incluso pueden uh, enviar un comentario en el sitio web de control de inundaciones en hcfcd.org host. Y por último, si nos acompañan por teléfono, presionen estrella 3 para dejar un mensaje. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so back to questions. Um, Alan, our next one is going to come to you. Um, Danielle asked how the Harris Thrives resolution might play into project selection for um, the CDBG MIT project applications. So uh, thanks for that question. That's a good one. And um, it was not easy selecting all of the projects uh, that we have been pre presenting forward for these CDBG MIT applications. Uh, we've been tracking the uh, the program uh, since its inception when Congress appropriated the funds, working, meeting directly with GLO and with HUD on what we might expect. And so over that time period, I've been watching and filtering our bond program projects just as the bond prioritization framework that we developed has also helped to prioritize which projects get started first. So all of the projects that are in this program uh, scored very high in, the, in our own bond prioritization framework. Now, it just so happens that many of the elements that are in that prioritization framework are also mentioned in the scoring criteria for these applications when the GLO starts to rank the projects. For example, a social vulnerability is included as a scoring element. I believe it's 10 points are, are, are associated uh, with projects and will be ranked and scored accordingly. Uh, low to moderate income areas also are a scoring criteria on the GLO's side. And so what we did is we worked to strike a balance between how our community has asked us to prioritize projects based on that bond prioritization framework, figure out where those projects overlap with the scoring criteria uh, laid out by the general land office to find that good fit of the, of the right projects. We think we've found that, uh, but again, we're always open to additional questions or comments or concerns about that. And so please feel free to reach out to us if there's anything that, that uh, we, you feel we may have missed on that mark. And Alan, I'm gonna come back to you for um, a sort of related question. Zach Rosen asked if there's a difference between the applications for CDBG MIT versus the Flood Infrastructure Fund abridged uh, I, I'm really happy you asked that question as well, because that is the very specific source of a lot of my sleepless nights right now. Um, they are two different programs managed by two different state agencies, 
uh, utilizing funding sources from the federal government and from the state of Texas. So the CDBG MIT funding uh, is from the Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, appropriated to the state of Texas, and that's managed by the Texas General Land Office. So they prepared their their uh, 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 state uh, application, uh, state action plan, excuse me, uh, and then rolled out this uh, competitive application program. The flood infrastructure funding that is a, that was appropriated by the state of Texas uh, in the last legislation session uh, from from last year. And in that program, the state of Texas set aside $700 million of state funds uh, and rolled that program out through the Texas Water Development Board. Those abridged applications uh, were, uh, were submitted a couple of months ago. Uh, TWDB has scored those projects and has now sent out invitations to, to submit full applications. Um, Flood Control District is, is very thankful that we received invitations for two of those projects. Uh, those applications are due October 19th, and then the CDBG MIT applications are due October 28th, and that is the source of a lot of my sleepless nights right now. Sleepless nights in pursuit of flood mitigation, flood risk mitigation projects. Um, so I'm actually going to take the next question, which is a great one from Danielle asking when the formal comment period is going to open for these applications and where that notice will be given. Um, so the formal comment period will open um, early next month in early October. It'll run for 14 days. And we're really looking forward to um, getting feedback from the community on these projects. Um, we'll be hosting those applications and the project specifics on the Flood Control District's website where you will be able to submit comments and questions specifically about each piece of the application. We um, really encourage you to tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family about the applications. The more community um, engagement and involvement that we have in this effort, um, we'll just feel better about the entire process. Um, Alan always likes to say, um, it is a requirement of the grant application, but it's also just the right thing to do, and we're excited to do it. Um, We'll make the last um, question for Dina. Um, we've had a few questions about home buyouts. Can you just talk um, at a high level about our general volunteer buyout process? Uh, for our voluntary buyout process, sure. Um, folks that are located within a voluntary buyout area um, would have been a common, or they should have been notified by flood control already an approach to let them know they are within those areas. So um, if, if they're interested in participating in that, certainly they can respond back to us. And, and we have had some outreach efforts in the area since Hurricane Harvey. However, I, I realize people move in and out of areas and things change. If somebody's interested in learning more about that, we do have information on the Flood Control District's website about the voluntary buyout program. And they're certainly welcome to access that from our website and to also submit their contact information if they'd like to talk to somebody directly about that program and their property. Great, thanks so much, Gina, that's really helpful. And with that, we're actually a minute over of our time. Um, so I'm gonna let everyone get back to their evenings. Um, but as we've mentioned earlier, we'll be opening up the comment period um, early next month for folks to weigh in on project specifics. And again, I just want to reiterate that we want to hear from you on this effort. Um, you're able in the meantime to visit the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash calls to learn more about all the projects we've discussed tonight, as well as other efforts happening across the watershed and, and across the county. And with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We've had a great conversation and we look forward to continuing that conversation as this grant application process moves forward and as these projects continue to move forward across the county. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful evening.